JavaScript is a client side uh, language that allows us to make changes uh, to a page after it's been loaded. Let's see if we have a little drawing here that we can see. Uh, we don't really have one, so um, we'll skip the drawing part. So what do I mean by JavaScript? And what do I mean by changing a page after it's been loaded? An example of that is if we go to ESPN's uh, website. If I go to ESPN's website and the page loads, You'll notice that if I put my mouse over one of these menus, the menu appears. Okay. That happens without reloading the page. Notice that the rest of the page doesn't flicker, doesn't do anything. It just displays the menu after we put our mouse over it. That is accomplished through the use of JavaScript. So that is an example of client-side JavaScript. It runs on the client. In other words, it runs after the page has been loaded to the browser, all right? And it modifies an existing web page. In this case, for example, all these menus, the HTML for them exists already, all right? What the JavaScript does is it simply hides and shows these menus using CSS based on what the user does. So there's interactivity. Let me pull up a very simple example of JavaScript that we can look at. And this example will pull up will be over here. Let's start by looking at this example, spoiler. All right. We have a web page that says, who is Luke Skywalker's father? We click the show spoiler and it says Yoda. Then we have a button that changes color and it'll change the color from green to yellow. Now these are trivial examples, but they do show uh, how we can use JavaScript to change the content of a page. Let's look at the code here for this. All right. Notice what we have. We have our HTML that shows everything. In other words, the spoiler and the question and the answer to the spoiler are both in the HTML. Who is Luke Skywalker's father, Yoda, and who shot first, Han shot first, all right? That doesn't initially display on the screen. The reason it doesn't initially display on the screen is because of the CSS that we have. 
the CSS makes the things that are tagged as a spoiler by having a class of spoiler. So any paragraph with a class of spoiler, we have set to have no display. So it's invisible. So when this page first loads, we have our paragraph, our other paragraph, but the answers are not visible. That is because of the CSS. The CSS here has a question, one has a background color of green and has all paragraphs that are tagged as spoilers, such as this one and this one. It has their visibility set to invisible. In other words, the display is set to none. Now, that's the way it changes until the user invokes some action. And in this case, we have a button. And the button does a little snippet of JavaScript. So we have what's called an event. The event is what triggers the code to go into effect. So this button has an on-click event. What that means is when the button is clicked, this instruction runs. So what does this instruction say? Let's look at it in pieces. The first piece of it says document, get element by ID, spoiler one, style display. What we are doing with this is we are pointing to the thing on the page that has an ID of spoiler one. So what has an ID of spoiler one? This has an ID of spoiler one. So we're finding things that are part of the web page. That's what document means. We find the thing that has the ID of spoiler one, and we're going to change its style. All right. What are we going to change its style to? We're going to change the display part of the style, and we're going to set that equal to block. Now, a couple of things about JavaScript. It is uh, case sensitive. No power in here or in 103, the, the projector's not working. Okay, I'll have to, that's I think we had those power issues on Friday. Right. Right. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm just going to continue with this then. <laughs> that's fine. All right. 103 is a big one because I'll need that this afternoon, but that, that's not yours, you said. Yeah, I'll, I'll put it in a word. I'll okay. go over there and I'll put it in a word. All right. Myself. Gotcha. All right. Yes, we had power issues and things are not working this morning, uh, but I'm working this morning. So that makes up for it. All right. Button on click. That means that when the button is clicked, this is what happens. We find on the web page, that's what document means. We find the thing that has an ID of spoiler one. We're going to change its style. What are we going to change its style about? What about the style are we going to change? We're going to change the display attribute and it's going to change it to block. Now notice a couple things. This is case sensitive. So if I change one of these things, if I put a D, for example, or get element by ID, and I reload it, Show spoiler doesn't work. So what do you do when it doesn't work? Do you just stare at it to see what's wrong? No, you can actually go, if you're running Google Chrome, and it works similarly in other browsers as well, you can go to More Tools, Developer Tools, and look at the console, and it will tell you. Type there. Document get element by ID is not a function. And you can tell by that, well, you know, you might not recognize it immediately, 
but you can tell that there is a uppercase D in there and it should be a lowercase D. So you should be able to correct it and everything should work fine after that. So it's one of the most common errors that people make. Also, if you didn't give a valid value for this, this is the ID. If you spelled it wrong or used a capital letter in it, you would get a similar error. And if you view the council, you'd be able to see what the error is. So this is a good introductory introduction to uh, JavaScript because we have all the elements of JavaScript. We have something in the user interface that kicks in and causes something to happen. In our case, we have a button. And when you click on the button, something happens. We use this kind of expression, and this is called a DOM expression. DOM stands for Document Object Model. Document Object Model is the way that you can ref refer to different parts of the page using JavaScript. And for us, one of the key things that we're going to be using is document get element by ID, because that allows us to find specific pieces of the page. It allows us to find anything that has a certain ID. And that is very useful in JavaScript because then we can, once we found that thing that has that ID, we can change it. All right. We then use the DOM to say, okay, we found the thing. What are we going to change? We're going to change the style. What about the style of the display? Notice that that corresponds to style and display. So these aren't new things. These are simply a different way of referencing the things on the page. We can set the style of something this way by having a style tag and by having a style rule in it. We can also change it via JavaScript this way and change the value to black. So I could make a button to hide it again. And how would I do that? Well, I'll copy this button. I'll change the value of the button to hide spoiler. And I'll change block instead of setting the display property to block, we'll change it back to none. So that when I click this button, we're going to find that thing that has an ID of spoiler one. We're going to change its style, specifically the display property, and we're going to set it back to none. So if we save that. And refresh. We can show the spoiler or we can hide it again. Now, we can also change the color. We can change literally anything about it. We could change the font. We could change the font size. We could turn it bold. We could do any sort of thing. The specifics of what we change right now are less important than the fact that we can point to the thing on the page and change a particular uh, aspect of it. So in this button case, we have Input type equals button, change color. And on click, we say document, get element by ID. Question one, we're going to change the style. What about the style are we going to change? We're going to change the background color. What are we going to set that to yellow? Notice in the style, it is background dash color, where in JavaScript, we make it background color with a capital C. So we can go and we can change the color of that to yellow. Now in our second spoiler, why does this button work with this spoiler instead of the first one? Because we're pointing to a different thing on the page. We're saying find the thing on the page that has an ID of spoiler two and set the style, what about the style set to display to block? So we can show and hide the spoiler that way. All right, 
Let's look at another example. Let's look what spoiler two does. Oh, this one, we have a different trigger for the spoiler. We use a mouse over event. So instead of clicking on it, when I move my mouse on it, it shows, and when I move my mouse out, it hides the spoiler. So let's look to see how we do that. It's gonna be almost the same, but there's gonna be one small difference in it. And that is we're not going to have an on click event because we don't have to click to make it happen. Instead, we're gonna have on that paragraph, an on mouse over event, and an on mouse out event. The on, on mouse over event kicks in when the mouse is put on this element. So when we put the mouse on this paragraph, we find a thing on the page called spoiler one and we show it. If we take the mouse off of that paragraph, we set the display back to none. So the same JavaScript commands, just a different way to trigger those to happening. Let's look at other JavaScript examples. Here is sort of like what we have for ESPN, just a very small scaled down version of it. We could imagine these each being menu items. And when I put my mouse over it, I show the menu item. Now I'm not hiding the menu item again, but when I put my mouse over it, it shows it. We can make the change to hide it in a, in a minute here. How do we do that? Well, we have on mouse over, get element ID, sub item one, style display equals block. I could put in on mouse out. None. So I can do almost like we've done with the ESPN page of we can make the menu appear and we can make the menu disappear. Now we have a problem because if we go down to try to click on one of those link items, it disappears. So we're gonna have to go in and put the same code on the UL that corresponds to the menu, the submenu. We put our mouse over, it appears. We then can go and click on one of these things. And if we take our mouse out of it, the menu item disappears. That is very similar to what happened on, that we saw happen on the ESPN page. The only difference, frankly, is that they spent more time styling it than I did. Mine are, are oriented uh, vertically. They had theirs oriented horizontally across the page. And their submenu they came up was much bigger than mine, which only has a few items. Their submenus had a bunch of items on it. But basically, that's sort of the same idea as uh, we did.
keep in mind in this class, we're just doing a very short introduction to JavaScript. We're not doing a very extensive introduction. We cover JavaScript more thoroughly in CISS 232. But it is a critical part of web pages. Therefore, we want to at least introduce it to you in this class so that you have a sense of what it does on a web page and can do some small functions uh, associated with it. All right. And this is one example of something we can do where we can show and hide different menu selections. I am going to post this lecture and I'm also going to post uh, the lecture from last semester uh, that probably goes into a little more detail uh, for you to view. So, uh, sorry for the short lecture today. Again, there seems to be technical difficulties on campus. Uh, but uh, hopefully by Wednesday or by next week, rather, they'll be all straightened out and we'll be ready to roll and talk more about JavaScript. All right, I will see you in lab uh, or we'll see you next week. Take care.